Okay, let's have a look at these uh, rocker arm assemblies here. So, in prior videos I explained about the ratio of rockers and how you achieve a higher lift which increases your torque by changing the ratio of the rocker. So the difference is from the center line of the rocker arm to the outer edge to the edge that's being pushed down here by the push rod. So our push rod has a male and then a female socket to engage it which allows it to move and it's under pressurized oil and you can see here there is a cross fed gallery that also provides lubrication up to the shaft to keep the uh, friction low between the rocker arm and the shaft itself. So these ones are a solid shaft and you can see here that it's bolted on the end, they're shimmed and I've spent a lot of time in here to make sure that I have adjusted the geometry. When we talk about the geometry there's a couple different things that are involved. One is the ratio of the rocker which is part of the geometry because we have a mechanical advantage being established through the actual lift of the camshaft and then how much movement is actually pushing down on the valve. The other part of the geometry is making sure that the rocker arm shaft is sitting in the right spot on the head so at max lift we reduce the amount of tension that's on the rocker arm and for its ratio and its lift that it's pushing down on the valve. We don't want to have it traveling too far causing coil bind. We don't want it traveling too far where maybe the rocker arm lash adjuster or part of the rocker arm comes down and touches the retainer. And you can see here in this one I have quite a bit of room between the lash contact pad which is the adjuster and then the lash cap which I talked about in previous videos. So what I do with these is I put shims underneath the rocker arms to bring the rocker arm out based on the thickness of the shim or the, the thickness of the lash cap and then I adjust this out accordingly. So if I had 30 thou here extra dimension with this lash cap put on then I would add roughly about 30 thou under the rocker arm to bring the geometry out. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take a look at this. I'm just going to move the camera over just a little bit here for you and as I cycle this through at max lift this rocker arm should sh sit parallel to the edge of the uh, head itself. So we don't want it traveling too far and being off angle. So if I cycle this through to its max lift and you can see here that right about now yeah, because on my timing mark, I'm right at 90 on this particular stroke. So we want to make sure that this part of the rocker arm sits as close, as parallel to the head as possible. And you can see here, uh, I might be at about 89 degrees, but it's probably pretty close to 90 if we look at the from here. So right from this edge to this edge. Okay, we want to see that we have that sitting as parallel as possible. That reduces the amount of tension. You can really see the, the socket down here now that it sits into, but it reduces the angle and reduces the amount of tension that is actually put on the rocker arm. So if we have max lift at this particular point, we're not pushing way too far in. And this isn't coming way too far out because what that does is it changes the geometry uh, so much that it increases the amount of tension that's on the rocker arm. That causes an increase of friction. If we increase friction, we get more wear and it takes more power for the engine to run mechanically efficiently to produce the same amount of power. So if we can make the engine run um, with better mechanical efficiency, then we reduce the amount of friction, which means in turn we get more horsepower. That's sort of free horsepower that a lot of people don't bother to look at when they start assembling rocker arms or just throwing it on. And you know what? Sometimes people just bolt these on and they get lucky and they say, man, my car works great. And it's just 
luck of the draw that it went on everything went together right or maybe that particular combination of rocker arm shaft assembly works perfectly for that engine but it's always a really good idea to follow through the stroke the cycle that it's on and make sure that the rocker arm's not traveling too far causing an increase of friction and again wearing out parts and consuming horsepower now this happens to be a VW engine and uh, every little bit of horsepower in a VW engine is very very important. Uh, so I make sure I spend that extra time to do this stuff to make sure that I get that horsepower that I'm looking for. So I'll just cycle through this a little more and you can see the operation of this. Now you can also see here that I'm right over the very center. Uh, even on this one over here you can see I'm right over the center same with this one I'm right over the center of the lash cap and that provides lots of even movement as the rocker arms moving through its cycle and that reduces the amount of friction and again provides better contact less wear and works way more effectively so there's an example of the rock, re, rock, rocker <laughs> ratio and how it functions when we talk about geometry in the top end of a VW engine. Now this engine here that I'm running uh, happens to be a 1680 cc engine that has a 110 angle cam in it and has a counterweighted bottom end and I run an, a balancer on a, a equalizer balancer on the engine to increase the bottom end weight to make it run smoother and higher in RPM. Now I also have this engine turbocharged. So that's just another example of what you should be doing when you're trying to maintain or try to achieve as much horsepower as possible in any engine design.